What's going on, my fellow YouTube friends, family, and strangers? It's your boy, Charles Enoch. Y'all already know, we back with another episode of Invest in Myself. So we gonna go ahead and run the clip. So I've been getting some emails about how do you know which credit card to start paying off first when you're doing velocity banking. So to quickly answer the question, in my opinion, you're going to want to pay off the credit card that is charging you the most interest. This will obviously increase your cash flow at a higher rate during the pay down period and once you pay it fully off. So the real question is, how do you know which credit card is charging you the most interest? And since credit cards charge simple interest, there is a basic equation that we can do to configure how much interest is being charged on each credit card. And you know we'll be breaking this down, but first, you already know, I'm gonna ask you guys, go ahead, smash that like button for a brother. Make that thing turn blue. Also, if you're new to the channel or you've been watching a couple of my videos and you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead, Take that little bitty time, hit that subscribe button for me. I do appreciate anybody that does this. It does help me reach a higher audience base. All right, now that we got that out the way, let's hit this whiteboard. Let's learn how to calculate credit card interest. Let's go. All right, so we at the whiteboard. You already know, we get straight down to business. I don't have a name for this individual. We just gonna call him off the top, credit card Craig here. So. Let's see, we got credit card Craig, his income is gonna be $2,500. Expenses are gonna be $2,200. Part of those expenses is gonna be the rent, which is $1,000 that's rolled into the $2,200. So his cash flow is gonna be $300 every month. Now, credit card Craig has two credit cards and he needs to decide which credit card he wants to pay off first and start Velocity Banking. So credit card number one has $10,000 on it and the interest rate is 10%. Credit card number two is gonna have $5,000 and the interest rate is gonna be 25%. Now, just to make it simple, we have credit card number one, the minimum payment on the credit card is $200. And credit card number two, the minimum payment is also gonna be $200. So the question, we need to figure out which one is charging more interest. Now, credit card number one has more debt on there, but a lower interest rate. Credit card number two has lower debt by a higher interest rate. So we're going to look over here and we're going to ask us the question. We're going to ask ourselves the question, which do I pay off first? So this is where we learn that simple interest calculation to figure out what exactly is the interest that the credit card is charging us every month. So for credit card one, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna take the $10,000 and we're gonna times that by 0 0.10. That's pretty much 10%. We're gonna divide that by 12 because there's 12 months within a year and we're gonna get $83.33 that it is charging us in interest when it's at that $10,000 debt level. Now, we're gonna to go to credit card number two and we're gonna use that same equation here. So we have $5,000, we're gonna times that by 0.25, which is the 25% interest rate that they're charging us. We're obviously going to divide that by 12, which is going to give us $104.16 that it is charging us for interest. So looking at both of these, we're obviously going to choose credit card number two to pay off because it is charging us more interest. Even though credit card number one has more debt, credit card number two is hurting our cash flow more than credit card number one. And it's pretty much around that $20 mark that it's hurting our cash flow more. All right, now we're on the other side of the board. Since we have figured out 
which credit card to be paying off first, we're gonna look at the method on how we're gonna be paying that credit card off. And we're gonna see what the simple interest is in the true cash flow that we're gonna be receiving every single month. So, step number one of the method, credit card Craig is going to pay his rent $1,000 out of his own cash. So remember his income is $2,500. Now he's gonna pay credit card number one, the minimum payment, which was $200. He's gonna pay that off as well for that month. So that's $1,200 of his cash he's gonna pay and pay it on the rent and pay it on the credit card. Now step number two, he's gonna put the rest of his income on credit card number two, the credit card that we're wanting to pay off. So that's gonna be $1,300 that he will put onto credit card number two. Now the balance on that credit card, remember, was $5,000. So once we put that $1,300 on there, the balance is gonna be $3,700. Now we're gonna to go to step three. We're gonna pay all other expenses with credit card two. So the $1,300 that we put on there we're gonna pay all the expenses out of that same credit card. So the expenses that are left is going to be $1,000. Because remember, we paid 1,200 and our expenses are 2,200. So it's gonna be $1,000 that you're gonna charge on the card. Now, to break this down a little bit, you put $1,300, part of your income, on credit card number two. Now, $1,000 went out because you have to pay 1,000 left in expenses. So this leaves your cash flow at that $300 that we were talking about with the income 25, expenses 2,200. Just to break that down even further. So we're gonna go to step number four. The balance on your credit card, number two, is gonna be $4,700, pretty much the $300 cash flow, right? All right, so now, we're gonna to go to step five, and we're gonna be seeing what the interest that is calculated per day regarding the balance on the credit card. So when the credit card has $3,700 on there, this is the daily interest that's being charged on your credit card. So we're gonna take that $3,700 of the debt, we're gonna times that by 0.25, which is 25%, the 25% interest rate, right? And then we're going to divide it by 365. That's because there's 365 days in a year. So when the credit card balance is at that $3,700, so once you put that 1,300 in there, it's $2.53 that's being charged in interest per day. Now, once it gets back to that $4,700, then we're gonna do that same calculation, right? So $4,700 times 0.25, the interest rate that the, char uh, that the card is charging, divide that by 365, because it's 365 days in the year, right? And we're gonna get $3.21 per day that is charging us when the balance is that. So to kind of break this down, let's say a regular individual, they would leave the $5,000 on the card and then pay the $300 cash flow once there is the due date. But once they do that, you're using this calculation, the $5,000 times 0.25, and you're gonna divide that by 365, is gonna give you a higher daily interest that it is charging you because that's the balance on the card. So this is why with Velocity Banking, we're putting that money on the card. So part of the time is gonna be that $3,700 which would give us a lower interest rate per day. And this is why you're gonna get it paid off a little bit quicker and why you would wanna use the Velocity Banking method of using the credit card as your bank account, stuffing that money in there, everything but the stuff that you have to pay in cash. Obviously credit card, number one, 
you can't pay a credit card with a credit card. You're gonna have to use the cash out of your income, out of your check. And then a lot of times for the rent, you know, um, you can use plas plastic, but a lot of times it's easier just to, you know, pay in cash. So those are the two things that we have to pay in cash, but everything else we're dumping it on there so we can stay at that 3,700 for let's say even half of the month here. So we're gonna further break it down just a little bit here. So what I did was we're gonna use the $2.53 per day. We're gonna use that for 15 days. And then we're gonna use the $3.21 for 15 more days. So we're just hypothetically saying that, hey, half the time the car was at that $3,700 um, balance and they were charging us this interest rate and half the time they were charging us that interest rate. So if we're adding that together, so the 2.53, we times that by 15, we're going to get 37.95% or 37.95 for the interest that they have charged us. We're gonna do the same thing for the $3.21. We times that by 15, we're gonna get 48.15. We add that up, the total interest was $86.10 that the credit card will be charging us, which is lower than 104.16, right? So our cash flow is $300 if we just use the 2,500 and then the 22, we got the cash flow of 300. We would have to minus that by 86.10, which is the interest that they charged us for that month. And then our true cash flow is $213.90. Now remember with the simple interest, it always gonna be dictated on what is the debt for this calculation. So the true cash flow is always gonna be growing, right? Until you get that paid off and then the true cash flow will be that $300 like we see with the naked eye. Now, remember too, if you have a rewards credit card, a lot of times if you're swiping that credit card, you're getting cash back or some rewards, which could even increase the true cash flow. But we just wanted to put it as a simple example. My previous video, I did do a scenario where one of my clients, they did have a rewards card and part of that rewards was getting tied into the cash flow. Now, I hope this video did help anybody that ever just wondered, hey, which credit card should I pay off? You know, this credit card has a higher debt, but the interest is lower. This credit card has a lower debt, but the interest is higher. I'm not sure which one to start off with. We're gonna be using that equation to figure out which one is pretty much hurting your cash flow more and then I will focus on attacking that. So if this video did help you, again, smash that like button for me, make that thing turn blue, help a brother out. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead, take a little time, hit that subscribe button for me. I really do appreciate it. Again, it does help me reach a higher audience base. And you know, like always, you guys have a good weekend. Peace out.